Now we have a look to the trust problem of two key encryption methods and understand the role of certificates and public key infrastructures. Let's start to remind you to the trust problem of two key encryption methods. The secure usage of two key procedures depend very much on the proper allocation of the public key and the participant uh, of the encryption method and the user. Because this is difficult, because the one is a virtual string and the other is a real identity. And how to connect this two so that the receiver of a message, for example, in case of uh, when he wants to verify a digital signature, is really true, that is a public key of that uh, user, of the sender. If an attacker succeeds in passing of his or her own public key for uh, uh, that of the participant, then the attacker can decrypt. The attacker can read all encrypted messages and can send uh, the actual addresses uh, and for the right person it's no more possible. So really, we discussed this already, this is a kind of attack of an attacker that they a kind of man in the middle attack, that attacker try to replace his or her local, his or her uh, public key uh, with the name of uh, the participant uh, of the two key encryption the applier. So an attacker can not only encrypt all the, decrypt all the uh, messages that are sent, the attacker can also sign messages in behalf of the addressee. The secure and trustworthy allocation of public keys to their owners, that is established by means of certificates. Exactly that is why we need certificates. When, for example, uh, in case of application of HTTPS, when establishing an HTTPS connection, it is necessary to verify the identity of the both communication partner. So the identity of the internet service in front of the, uh, of the user and the user f uh, to identify the user for the internet uh, uh, service. And when we discussed about HTTPS, we already mentioned uh, that uh, there are certificates uh, used and needed. If this does not work well, so if the authentication is disturbed, then a man in the middle attack is possible in which the attacker poses as a legitimate internet service can take place and sits in the middle and can uh, control all interactions between the participant and the service. So it's particularly important to check the communication partner in case of critical internet services like uh, banks, online banking, like booking portals, like email portals and others uh, in cases there are uh, activities done, for example, that cost money or that have a huge impact on some uh, activities. When we speak of certificate, the full name is digital certificate. This is a document, a document that is digitally signed by a trustworthy third party. Typically, we speak of a trust center of that party, and the party uh, signs a link between the, uh, between the person, the entity, and its, his, her public key. So as a trustworthy third party, the trust center gives the user uh, such a certificate and the certificate is encrypted by the uh, private key of the trust center. So if one trusts a trust center that has signed such a certificate, one can rely on the attribution of the public key to its owner as attested uh, by the uh, certificate. The certificate contains information 
typically more about that, but typically they, uh, at least they have to contain information about the certificate holder. Is this a person? Is this a company? Is a web server? About the public key of that entity and the digital signature of the trust sender uh, which has, uh, that has issued that certificate. The trust sender that signs the certificate guarantees with uh, its own name for the accuracy of the information and the accuracy of the information is the connection of a uh, certificate holder and its public key. The use of such certificates uh, allows the user to authenticate himself. So the idea is, the, the mechanism, the, the workflow is, the user sends a message that's signed by himself, that means that it's encrypted with the private key, together with uh, his certificate, in the certificate there is, uh, his, uh, there is his public key, and then the service or the partner can take this and can validate the signature of the certificate and can check the authenticity of the message. The partner of the service can do this uh, by using the public key out of the certificate and then uh, decrypting the signature of the message that was sent by the user. If the user's signature can be verified, that means if the description is possible, then it's ensured that the message actually comes from the alleged sender, and if it's not decryptable uh, with the public key of the sender, then it's the proof that the message comes from another party. When we see that it's important to solve the trust problem for two key uh, encryption methods by means of certificates, we see that there is whole infrastructure necessary. We speak of a public key infrastructure, the PKI. Remember, the two key encryption methods are also called public key encryptions. So in order to apply such a two key encryption in a secure way, that means with a solved uh, uh, trust problem uh, by means of certificates, this, such an infrastructure uh, is required that includes different components. Such PKI, such uh, public key infrastructures, includes as well software components, as well hardware components, as well personnel to regulate the provision the distribution, the use, and the revocation of certificates. All the center, at the center of such a PKI is the trust center. We already mentioned this. But such a trust center has different functions. Such a trust center has different components. One component is the registration authority, RA. Another component is the certification authority, CA and one component is the validation authority. Uh, here uh, uh, we show how these different compo uh, components work together. The user wants to verify uh, his or her identity at the registration authority and submiss, uh, submit his or her public key. The user needs for uh, for, for later communication, a certificate, and to, car, to, to get such a uh, certificate, the user has to contact the registration authority and has to verify that he is he. And he has to verify, he has to submit his uh, public key. So the user registers. And in the second step, then the registration authority transfer the login data, so the identity data and the public key, to a certification authority, to this component uh, of the, uh, of the uh, trust center. And then the certification authority creates a certificate. Creates a certificate, 
signs a certificate for the user and sends this certificate to the user. Now the user has uh, his, uh, has his certificate. Now the user can use his certificate, for example, for the communication with other partners. So the certificate is uh, sent together uh, with the message to user. But before we have to mention that the certification authority also uh, stores the certificate uh, in the validation uh, uh, authority component of its trust center. This is important, this validation authority, that a user or a service that receives the certificate of a user can check whether the certificate uh, is uh, okay. So uh, now the user wants to communicate, wants to communicate for example with his online bank and uh, starts to uh, send a message together with a certificate a message, a signature together uh, with a certificate to the partner, to the online bank and then the communication partner uh, validates the certificate. That means the communication partner, the online bank, checks is this, uh, is this certificate okay or is there something wrong with it. And for that reason the communication partner sends the certificate to the uh, validation authority, uh, checks the, uh, the signature and gets the answer yes, the certificate is valid. Uh, value, uh, valid. And uh, this uh, validation check can be done uh, on the basis of the stored data from the user. And if it's okay, we have seen in, the, uh, in our uh, clip about digital signature, then communication can be done, the, uh, certific the signature can be decrypted and the uh, originality of messages can be checked. The question is how such public key infrastructures are organized because one can easily imagine that it's not possible to have worldwide one, only one such trust center. Typically, such a trust center is organized hierarchically. That means there are different trust centers in place, for example, in the different regions or different cities, uh, are in place uh, on top of this network of uh, trust centers, there is the root uh, CA, the root certification authority. So if a user wants to verify the identity of, an, uh, of for example, such uh, of, of this uh, uh, certification authority, uh, then he checks the certificate of this uh, certification authority and it is signed by the root CA. The root uh, CA, uh, this is the top instance for all the network of uh, trust centers and when the user trusts the root CA, then the user also trusts the signature of the root uh, certification authority and then he trusts all the other uh, uh, certification authorities. If we look uh, into uh, practical application, then uh, I remind you that TLS SSL uh, infrastructure is based on uh, the usage of certificate and this TLS SSL uh, infrastructure is based on such a hierarchical public key infrastructure. So the root certification authority certificates are stored in the browser or in the operating system so that it becomes easy to check and can perform automatically to check if there is a uh, connection request to, est in, to establish such a TSS SSL connection. Then uh, in the browser uh, there is the root CA certificate stored. So for example uh, when one wants to establish 
the client wants to establish an ATB-based connection to an online marketplace, for example, to, uh, uh, to uh, Amazon. Then you see here the uh, so you see here the certificate hierarchy. Then the verification is done of the signature of the certificate of Amazon, of the service provider, of the online market. And this is done with the help of a higher level certificate. And this higher level certificate comes, uh, in case of Amazon, from Symantec, a security company. So the signature uh, of the Symantec certificate is checked with the help of an already stored and trusted root CA certificate and this root CA certificate that comes from a very sign in case of uh, Amazon. So this uh, can be uh, considered as an as establishment of a, a, a trust chain uh, from the Amazon uh, um, from the Amazon certificate to the root certificate uh, which is signed by Amazon. This was an example with Amazon also works with, 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 with other marketplaces, online banks and uh, services uh, you can reach with TLS SSL. We have this hierarchical organization of the public key infrastructure, but there are different public key infrastructures in place. And another idea to make it convenient for the user on the one side, but on the other side to guarantee security, is that it should be possible to change, to move from one public key infrastructure into another one. And the method that's used for that is cross-certification. And cross-certification, the idea is we have a root CR uh, uh, from one public key infrastructure, we have a, we have a root CA uh, from another uh, uh, public key infrastructure, and they sign each other uh, certificates. So in this way, for every user, uh, for every user uh, of one public key infrastructure, uh, he sees that he can trust on the certificates of the other uh, public key infrastructure. So the instances of one side trust those of the other side and simply because of the fact because the, uh, the, the, the highest authority in that security uh, chain, the root CRs, they recognize uh, each other same. And of course, before one root CA uh, recognize and, and uh, allow such a cross-certification with the other root CA, there is a check whether the same security level uh, are uh, maintained uh, so that the user really, uh, which are used to work in that public key infrastructure, really can also trust uh, application services that are certified by the other trust infrastructure. Beside of this hierarchical uh, organization of the public key infrastructure, we have also more a network uh, a model, the so-called web of trust. Here, one user can sign other user's certificate. He can guarantee with his own name that the uh, allocation of the uh, public key uh, and the name of the user, of the other user, uh, that they agree. And one can, does this not only with, uh, with, with one uh, user, one can uh, do this with many users, a certificate. And in this way, there is, there, there is established a web of trust. The more other users sign my certificate, the more trustworthy is that. So it is for third for other people. Because other people, when they trust anyone who has signed my certificate, then he can trust this certificate and they can trust me. So if user A, a if user A is known to user B, and the certificate of user B has been signed by user C. A can also trust the uh, certificate of C. You see this in this picture. 
This is, for example, an application uh, in the organization of the, uh, of the public key infrastructure, uh, of the trust infrastructure by uh, PGP, pretty good privacy for securing email communication.